Okay, so the discrete random variable x has the probability distribution defined in the table below for x equals 1 to 5. And part A asks us to determine the mean and the variance of x. So the mean, of course, is calculating the expectation of x. So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply the x values by the probability and sum them all up. So you need to show the whole working line for this. No shortcuts, don't take any... Don't do the, uh, any mental arithmetic during this. Actually, just show the substitution. Know that you demonstrate that you know actually what is supposed to be done here. So one times 0 0.1, two times 0 0.2, plus three times 0 0.3, plus four times 0 0.1, and then finally plus five times 0 0.3. So show. The proper line of substitution to demonstrate that you understand how to calculate the expectation of x because if you make any mistakes while doing that then that the examiner doesn't know that you know correctly how to do this so when we work through this we get 0.1 plus 0.4 plus 0.9 plus 0.4 plus 1 1.5 and so when we total that up, I mean, you don't necessarily need to show that working line as long as you show this and then do it on your calculator and come up with the right answer of 3.3. .3. Okay, now the variance of x we know relies on doing the expectation of x squared. So let's work that out first of all. Expectation of x squared is exactly the same as above, so let's demonstrate it as above. But this time we're going to square the x value, so I get 1 squared times 0.1 plus 2 squared times 0.2 plus 3 squared times 0.3 plus 4 squared times 0.1 and then plus 5 squared times 0.3 now again you don't need to show that line like I did before sometimes it's quicker to work just by writing it out without using a calculator sometimes it's quicker just to stick it into a calculator okay so really having showed the substitution all I really then need to do is show that when I work out the expectation of x squared we get to an answer of 12.7 so now we can demonstrate that the variance of x remember to state the identity is the expectation of x squared minus the expectation squared of x. So the variance of x will be given by 12.7 minus 3.3 .3 squared and when we carry out that calculation and stick it in our calculator what we get is an answer of 1.81. Okay so five marks for that question. It's quite a lot of marks for something that's pretty procedural and so the first mark that you're given is a method mark for showing the correct substitution into the summation for the expectation of x. You then get one accuracy mark for getting the correct answer of 3.3. Next, we then get a statement mark for calculating correctly the expectation of x squared. And actually the mark comes for this bit here. And then if you can state this, you, you, that's, that helps later on as well. So then finally, we have two more marks to award. The other marks are given for this line here, just showing correctly that the variance of x is given by 12.7 minus 3.3 .3 squared. And so you get a method mark for this and an accuracy mark for this statement. Okay, so let's have a look at part B. Part B is a question where we are looking at independent observations of the discrete random variable. So in this occasion, we're going to look at three independent observations, x1, x2, and x3. And we are going to calculate a variable s based on adding x1, x2, and x3. So we're asked to find the probability that s equals 4. So let's think about how this can happen. Probability s can equal can equal 4 will be found by doing probability. And let's just think of the different ways we could do this. x1 
equals, let's say, 1, with x2 also equal to 1, and x3 would then have to be equal to 2. So we'd have to have all three of these things happening. So we've got the intersect. This is union with, because that's not the only way things can happen, we could have x1, x1 could still be equal to 1, but this time x2 could be equal to 2. And so that would mean this time x3 is equal to 1. And again, that's not the only way of things happening. The final way that things could happen is that we could have x1 equal to 2. And this would mean that x2 would have to be equal to 1. And that x3 would have to be equal to 1. OK, so these are all the possible things that can happen. What we need to do is work out the probability of each of these three different things. So what we're going to end up with here, probability s equals 4. Well, the probability x1 equals 1, x1, x2 equals 1, and x3 equals 2. This is going to be calculated by doing the independent events, so we're going to multiply them together. So probability x1 equals 1 is 0.1 times probability of x2 equals 1 is 0.1 times the probability x3 equals 2 is 0.2. So we're just going to have rearrangements of this. This is union. These events are all mutually exclusive. So the different ways that we can get 4 are mutually exclusive because they can't happen at the same time. So we're going to add the probabilities for these. So we then get 0.1, which is probability of x1 equal 1. Probability x2 equals 2 is 0.2. Probability x3 equals 1 is 0.1. And again, adding on this other mutually exclusive event now, probability x2 equals 2 is 0.2, times probability x2 equals 1 is 0.1, times the probability x3 equals 1, which is 0.1. So, when I work through this, s equals 4, what we have is 0 0.002, and we're going to have that three times, so we get 0 0.002 times 3, which gives me a probability of 0 0.006. Okay, so how do we get the marks on this question? Well, first of all, we get a statement mark if you have stated in some way or another if you've listed it or used the same notation as me, what we need to do is show that there are three different ways of finding or obtaining s equal to 4. Okay, Then we get a method mark and an accuracy mark if we've worked through these steps in some way and got to the answer 0 0.006. Okay, So you need to show some sort of working, whether it's this line here, this line here or both, and then your answer 0 0.06. Okay, so let's have a look at part two. Part two wants to find the probability that s is less than 4. Now, the only ways we can get probabilities s less than 4 is probability s equals 3 or s equals 4. Now, we already have the probability that s equals 4. We can use that from the previous question, so that's nice. So all I need to work out in addition is the probability that s equals 3. So probability s equals 3 is a probability that we get x1 is 1, x2 is 1, and x3 is 1. It's the only possible way that it can happen. Okay, so, I mean, I'll write it just to demonstrate to you so you can see actually what's happening. Uh, so that's x1 equal to 1 intersect x2 equal to 1, uh, intersect x3 equal to 1. So what we're going to do here is essentially 0 0.1 times 0 0.1 times 0 0.1, which is 0 0.1 cubed. And so when I do that, we get 0 0.001. 0 .001. So finally, probability s is less than 4, less than or equal to 4, sorry, I should have put the equals in, of course, is going to be equal to probability s equals 3, which is 0 0.001. Union, so these are exclusive events, it can't be equal to 3 and 4 at the same time, so we're going to just add 
then the probability that s can be equal to 4, which is 0 0.006, and so we get an answer of 0 0.007. Okay, so how do we get our marks here? Well, the marks come, first of all, we're going to get a statement mark for showing probability that s equals 3. can only happen this one way by getting 1 on each of the x variables. We are then going to get a statement mark, uh, yep, statement mark here for getting the probability that s equals 3 is 0 0.01. And then finally we get a statement b1 mark here for finding at the end probability s that is less than or equal to 4 is 0 0.07. Okay, so I hope that all made sense and that you understood it.